This film is about a fish conservation project in the Lake Malawi National Park, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The project, run by Ripple Africa, supported by UNESCO and funded by the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is particularly focused on protecting the unique cichlid fish and their environment, which is within 100 metres of the shoreline of the park and the islands. In southern Africa, the best, best place where you can snorkel is in Malawi. And the best place is here in Cape Macri, whereby we have got plenty of fish that secrets. The water is all that clear. In, unlike in these other areas whereby the water becomes dead. When we, we are talking of a natural asset to Cape Macri and Buna fish, it's a natural asset. Why are there so many fish in Lake Malawi? What's unique about Lake Malawi? And I tell people it's not that Lake Malawi is so unique, it's the fish that are in them. It's the cichlid fish. The three lakes in the world that have the most fish are Malawi, Tanganyika, and Victoria. And they have more species of fish than any other lakes in the world. I am Sam Manda the project manager for fish conservation project in Lake Malawi National Park. We need to coordinate the village natural resources committees and beach village committees with the support from extension workers, both parks and wildlife as well as fisheries. The funding for the project has purchased motorbikes, cell phones, some office furniture, a boat and engine for enforcement and life jackets. A second boat and engine for the Malaria Islands has been funded by the International Conservation Fund of Canada. Importantly, there is funding to run and maintain these capital items so that all staff can actively do their job. My name is Amos Chiuta, a Parks and Wildlife Officer, and we are working hand to hand with the, the Fisheries Officer, my friend Oscar. So we are happy that we, we are having this uh, project of uh, fish conservation in Lake Malawi National Park. Same thing we are talking about here is about collaboration and coordinating between these two commits, the BNRC and the BBC. At first they were working separately. Now the Blue Africa project has brought them together. One big problem in the area is the huge number of legal and illegal pear trawlers which often fish close to the shore and in protected areas. Trawlers are prohibited from fishing within 1.8 kilometres of the shore or in shallow waters less than 15 metres deep. But as you can see, the rules are often ignored. This fisher is using an illegal encatcher net right in the park area, and this is the sort of activity that the Fish Conservation Project will be addressing. We visited fishing communities outside of the Lake Malawi National Park, and although there have been projects to conserve the fish, there is a lot of illegal fishing in the district. We want to raise money to cover the whole district so that we can help communities and fisheries and benefit the Lake Malawi National Park. This is Mauzu Beach. Uh, most of the fishers here use you know, illegal gears, as you can see. Uh, these are the monofilaments which are banned. They are illegal. They are not supposed to be used for fishing. Because of this issue, this problem, we need to empower the BVCs to ensure that uh, they are well trained and uh, responsible enough to you know, uh, get rid of all these uh, illegal gears. So this is the problem which we are having at hand. They can do it, as I said, it's, it's a, a, a beach sand, which they, they set um, and, and pull ashore. So what happens is that uh, the, the, the net itself is, is, is very small but the ropes are too long. So uh, the rope at each end are almost two to three kilometers long. So when they set th this net, it takes almost uh, six hours to pull it ashore. Yeah, that's how it operates. So you've got two teams pulling both ends? Exactly, two teams, each team pulling at each end. Okay. 
And all this fishing, and there's lots of this fishing in Mangochi, is that right? Yes, yes, a lot of them. And, and all of this is illegal? All these are illegal, yes. And if we can stop this, in the, particularly in the breeding areas, it's going to really make a then, very positive difference. Then obviously the fish may, may be restored. We are very much impressed with the way we are doing the conservation, in particular working with the communities and the beach village committees. And we are very much sure that by the end of this period we'll have a very positive results that will be produced in this project. And you're also, we've just been over to Melindi area where we've been seeing some of these big illegal nets. And uh, we'd like to try and raise money to cover the whole of Mangochi. So uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, that would be very important because from the site we have observed that there are a lot of illegal fishing gears, in particular the mosquito nets which they are using for fishing. Uh, so the operation itself is illegal and if the project can come to this site, automatically it will produce a positive result because we will be able to restore fish back to its glory. So what did you think of that? Oh, yeah. so fantastic. I yeah. loved it. You loved it? Yeah. So it's what did okay. you see down there? I saw white fish, blue fish. And there are so many tigers. Yeah. And, and they are good to be Yellow, uh, brown. Deserved. Yeah, it's good. So you're pleased to be helping to preserve these yeah, exactly. tigers, are you? That's what we are going to do I for the future it. generations also to come and uh, accept, uh, appreciate what we are seeing here. Mm -hmm. I actually came here for work, but when I saw the sacred fish, I was so amazed because they're so beautiful. And I thought to myself, I don't want anyone to harm those fish because I want to come back here, maybe with my family, so that they can see the beauty of, the, of those fish. Very, very important. It was to bring tourism. So our de Azung is in the Mbuna. So in you know, you get a job from here. And that's how you make money. So Mbuna is a good you have no money. No employment, no money. No money. Okay? So Antwa Jamvet. Then from there, this is the distance. We are talking of 100 meters. And one million 100 meters, they want to know. You know, the Antwa they have not been to school. But now, when they look at this, they will be able now to see the 100 meters, I'm not allowed to fish. So that's the message we are going to give out. By so doing, that means we are protecting Mbuna fish. Komasu Denata, Puzi Santu, also Greece and Chito mosquito Because it damage a lot. Like the many times, So it will be through education, bringing all stakeholders together. So parks, Fisheries department and the community, Panopa, we are to work as a team. So, in your Mukamona, my fishers are Japanopa, as a caress your enemies. They should become your friends because you are all aiming at preserving the Mbuna speech because it gives money to the community. And they are also doing the, the community to confiscate these gears. You will no longer be taking these gears because they will be fine. If yeah. the fine is 50,000, they are fully empowered, they will take it as business. So they will not only confiscate the gear just because he's, used, he's, he's fishing in the protected area. They will also confiscate for them to make money. Because they know if they confiscate that gear, they will make money, so they will run it as business. <laughs>